All right, uh, now we're gonna flip over to our the main the main thing we've been building out this whole episode is gonna be we're gonna do so Bills fans basically basically versus a Dolphins fan we're gonna do side by side comparisons of their of their rosters and like talk about go break down position groups and just talk about how we feel about them in comparison to one another. So, right. Tavor, can you pull up the Bills one? I got the Dolphins one in front of me right now. You got both. All right. So, again, I'm 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 using our lads. He's using ESPN. But okay, so according to our lads, you can I mean you know a lot more about this than we do. So if I if anything that this is wrong based on this website, correct me. But sure. starting so right now we got wide receivers. This is the starting ones. So first in depth chart, Devontae Parker, Gary Jennings, and Isaiah Ford at slot. Then Preston Williams, Matt Collins, and Shaquem Grant are the main backups. With Matt Cole, Ricardo Lewis, Malcolm Perry, Chester Rogers, and Kirk Merritt rounding out the rest of them. Who's the guy you said in the slot? The second one? Isaiah Ford. Oh, oh, oh is it? Oh, second one, Jakeem Grant. Oh, okay. I thought I, who was before Ford? You said. Uh, yeah, it was Isaiah Ford in the slot, and Jakeem Grant in the slot for a second team, and then Malcolm Perry third. Oh, okay, okay. Just for the record, Devontae Parker, Preston Williams, and Jakeem Grant are the three starters for ESPN. Yeah, that's what I thought there was going to be, but this one, I don't know. I, I think they're trying to say yeah. that one of them will play in the slot. But, I mean, they'll put – if you can get playmakers on the field, they're going to get playmakers on the field. It doesn't matter if they fit a position or not. Yeah. All right, and then for Bills, we have – go ahead. The Bills, we have Stefan Diggs, John Brown, and Cole Beasley, obviously. And then in backups, we have Gabe Davis and Isaiah Hodgins, uh, the rookies. We have Isaiah McKenzie, Duke Williams, Robert Foster, and Andre Roberts. Yeah. So I definitely say the Bills are more top heavy than the Dolphins. The Dolphins definitely have more depth at wide receiver. Um, I know coming out of the draft, I was a big fan of Malcolm Perry as a rookie. Uh, he's going to do some. He was, a, he was actually a quarterback in Navy, uh, but he yeah. played. He was played everywhere. Um, Jakeem Grant's good. He's always a firecracker returner. Um, and Devontae Power, Preston Williams, Devontae Parker, Preston Williams, uh, always going to be dangerous weapons. So they have the depth. I say I would I would give the Bills like the top end, like like higher, like Devontae Parker and Stephon Diggs. They're both the, the number ones, obviously. It might be my personal smile list. I don't know, but I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i say the Bills have the better number one receiver there. I just like I just like our top, our starting three compared to, like, the Dolphins. But the Dolphins definitely have better depth overall. They can run the four to five receiver sets and better than the Bills would just because they have more proven commodities and more people they've been in their system longer. Like, we have guys who are rookies and second-year players compared to uh, all along the board while you guys have guys who have been on your team for years at this point. You said Stefan Diggs was your number one? Yeah, it's Stefan Diggs at one, John Brown at two, and then Beasley at slot. Um, I'll have to agree with you. I, I would give the edge slightly to Buffalo. I would only – my defense for the Dolphins is, like you said, um, compared to Buffalo, we have guys that have been in our system. I, you know, it's kind of a new offensive system with our new coordinator anyway. But, like, Devontae, Preston, uh, all these guys have been here for a while. I love – uh, your trade for Stefan Diggs. I think he's one of the best receivers in the game. Um, I have to, you know, it's like a wait and see thing. You get on a new team, a new system, a new quarterback. Um, so f- as far as number one guys go, I would slightly favor Devontae just because he has that chemistry with uh, the Dolphins locker room. And he did some amazing things with Fitzpatrick last season. It was his best uh, season by far. So I would give us a slight edge at the one spot. But overall, I mean, you look at you, uh, your guys, uh, John Brown, um, phenomenal talent, uh, speedy guy, deep threat, Beasley, um, sh- good in the middle, intermediate routes, veteran presence. And then, like I said, Stefan Diggs should be a firecracker for you guys. Um, it's just a matter of if the chemistry will be there with Josh Allen. It lacked sometimes with Kirk Cousins. They butted heads a few times. But I think your top three guys uh, definitely outmatch our top three. I agree that we have better depth. But they're also a little bit unproven. I know Alan Hearns opted out. Um, Albert Wilson, I was really excited to see him play this year. So it um, hurts that those two guys with Hearns and Wilson won't be playing. Um, guys like Preston Williams, Jakeem Grant, Isaiah Ford, um, they've had glimpses of explosive play and good talent, but they just haven't been given enough starting experience for me to side completely with Miami. So I'll, I'll give us the edge with the one guy just because of Parker and his connection with Fitz. But overall, I think guys have more talent than us. Now, okay, 
I just don't. I it's just maybe it's just me not remembering or not paying attention enough. Wasn't Albert Wilson on your guys' team? He got hurt like a hip last year. He was there for a um, He had a few. Th I think the thing that set him out long. I thought it was like a ACL tear. Or it might have been a hip. I'm confusing him and um, who got hurt last year? Was it Grant that also got hurt? There was two big hits last year. One was I feel like an ACL or ligament tear, and then the other one was a hip. So, uh, but yeah. Yeah, they had were both very productive last year and slowed down by injuries. Yeah. And he's also a voluntary opt out this year. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I don't know um, how the Dolphins wide receiver core looked a couple years back, but I just found something that gave me flashbacks. This was on this was on uh, <laughs> the Bills uh, um, website, and it said, "Meet the Bills wide receivers: Kelvin Benjamin, <laughs> Jeremy Curley, Keelan Clay." We got Rod Streeter, Quan Bray, Malachi Dupree, and Zay Jones. That is a that's better than our receiving core now. Yeah, honestly. totally. I don't ever want to remember that again. Why did you bring that up? That was terrible. <laughs> I just want to note in what like three years how much our receiving core changed for the better. I think the low point of that receiving core when we had him was when Booger McFarland indicated that Kelvin Benjamin was one Popeye's biscuit away from a tight end. <laughs> I, I don't even think he was on our team at that point, but it just gave me... When I heard that, I was like, yeah, yeah, he was a guy we thought was going to be our number one. We traded a third-round pick for him. Totally, yeah. I wonder what that third-round pick actually became, because I'm just curious. But, um, all right, sticking with weapons, we'll go to uh, tight ends next. So, for Dolphins, they have Mike Gusecki, or uh, Gusecki, Durham Smythe, Adam Shaheen, um, Chris Murek? Chandler Cox and Nate Whit uh, Whitling, I believe is his name. Uh, and for the Bills, we have Dawson Knox, Tyler Croft, Lee Smith, and Tommy Sweeney. All right. So I'm just gonna say the Dolphins have the better tight ends. I think that's gonna be like I, I that's my opinion. I don't know how Taylor's feeling. I'm assuming you're gonna agree with me, Aaron. But uh, Mike, just I was a big fan of Mike uh, Gusecki in college. Uh, Adam Shaheen as well. Uh, they're both, and I especially love when you guys traded for him, as well as um, when you guys got him. I was like, oh, so they, he wasn't—he was really underutilized in Chicago because they had a lot of tight ends there. Um, so I mean, you guys, I, I, I think because compared to the Bills, uh, the way we are is Dawson Knox really raw. wasn't didn't get a lot of. He caught zero touchdowns when he was in college, so he wasn't really utilized a lot in the offense passing game. So now we're starting to acclimate him, but he still drops the ball a lot. He's still very raw at tight end. But you have two proven guys. Well, one, I'll say one and a half proven guys with Shaheen. Uh, and like our next best tight end is Tyler Croft, who was hurt, and then I wasn't too impressed with last year. Lee Smith, who holds on every other play. And then Tommy Sweeney, who was a seventh round pick. I was a big fan of when I was doing my draft review for that year. I was a big fan of him, but he's more of a blocker needing to get get there at a receiver kind of thing. So we really only have one real weapon at tight end, and even then he's raw, a raw second year player that needs to work on focusing on the catch and working the whole game out. Yeah, I'm going to have... I, I honestly don't even know who the hell any of your tight ends are. <laughs> uh, um, I, 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 oh, you said all three of those names. I honestly don't have... I have no clue who any of them are. Um, <laughs> I don't blame so. you. I don't blame you. <laughs> Tyler, Cro so, Tyler Croft was on, like, the Bengals back when he back when they were uh, a playoff team, kind of. Lee Smith was on our team, like, seven years ago. Left for the Patriots and some other teams. Then he came back, and he's just basically an offensive lineman that can run a little faster than normal offensive lineman, and then a seventh round pick. So I don't expect you to know any of those guys. No, 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 not ringing a bell. And, and to, to be honest, I, I'm not really familiar with our depth. I, I'm really only a fan of Mike Gesicki. Like you said, he was a great talent in, at Penn State. He had a slow start in our system, and um, but like I said last year, it was really him and Devontae Parker and the connection that Fitz, uh, Fitzpatrick had with those guys. Parker and Gesicki carried the team. They had their best seasons by far last season with Fitzpatrick. So I, I'll definitely give the tight end advantage to us. As long as Gesicki can, can continue to trend upwards, mm -hmm. uh, he's still a young guy, and I think he'll be one of the best tight ends in football. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. Um, any opinions, yeah. Tabor? 100%, I agree with that. I mean, literally, our starting tight end is a guy that can catch all the difficult passes, but can't catch, like, the most easiest passes in the world. It, he's so like bipolar. I don't understand how. Yeah, the one Patriots game, <sighs> or it was the it was the Ravens game. He made like a one-handed catch that I thought he was gonna drop. He like it was like one of the best catches I've seen all season for any Bill. 
And then the next play, it bounced off his hands and into a defender's hands. I was like, like it was, it was like a stop. He was just standing there, and it hit off his hands, and then they picked it off. I was like, how? But yeah, and like he's like he's a former. He played quarterback in high school and just made the switch to tight end. They didn't actually use him as a receiver in college. So now we have a guy who is basically just learning the position at tight end for us as, as our starter, opposed to you guys who has a guy who already proved to be a trending tight end going up and up. So I mean. It's not really a contest, for my opinion. There were some good tight ends out there. I'm surprised you guys didn't address it in free. Like Tyler Eifert even was out. I'm a big fan of him. There's a few good guys you could have signed. I don't know. That's what I thought we were going to do because, like I said, our backup position is between a guy who we could cut right now to save $6 million, who broke his foot first day of training camp last year, a guy mm -hmm. who's an offensive lineman who sucks at, not, sucks at blocking without holding, and a seventh-round pick whose main – trait is blocking mm -hmm. we have one tight end and it kind of like i know we all want to go towards running but i don't think i think you should have a tight ends that are more than just blocking center so it it uh, i just don't i mean I don't, to be fair we, we also have a guy named jason Kroom, which probably not, won't make the roster he's not but... gonna make the roster he's he's like a converted wide receiver isn't he yeah he's he's yeah he's more of like a he's the opposite of lee smith right yeah so we have a lot of niche tight ends not like an all-around like not Knox could eventually be it like uh, if you know anything about him if you know if you like I, I'm assuming some people have heard of him but if you know anything about him it was that one run against the Bengals I was there in person he caught the ball and trucked a dude stiff armed another guy and then trucked a third guy and he won if you guys if, uh, if you guys watch uh current run football they have a segment called angriest runs he won like the angriest run for the year everyone I talk to outside of Buffalo is that's the only thing they know about him so he has, he's not, he doesn't, hasn't, he didn't do much last year to impress, but they're hoping that since he's super raw that, and that he showed improvement last year throughout the season, that he'll continue to rise. Opposed to you guys who had that with Kaseki when he first came to the league, we're hoping that he follows the same path Kaseki basically did. Nah, I don't think, <laughs> it's a stretch, but we can hope. Yeah, oh, it, I mean, he was a third round pick for a reason, so I mean, it, it, it's, it's not like impossible, but, and like I said, he got better as the season went on, but. Gusecki is definitely the overall better tight end as of right now, and probably will be for a couple seasons. Is if he can, if he can even reach his whole career, the whole career. Uh, okay, okay, man. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep that over there. We'll go to uh, running backs now. Uh, we have Jordan Howard for the Dolphins. We have Jordan Howard, Matt Breida, Caleb Lodge, Miles Gaskins, Malcolm Perry again, and then Patrick Laird. And then for the Bills, we have. For the Bills, we have Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, TJ Yeldon, Taiwan Jones. I don't know if that's the name of the rest, but I know we have more like Christian Wade. Yeah, which but, I love, but he's but won't make the roster. No, uh, I oh wait, so it's another it's another thing of proven commodities versus young players. Like Singletary for us last year, he did some stuff. He uh, he got hurt a little bit, but he was able to do some things during the season. He didn't show out as like a number one running back, like a top running back. Opposed to you guys who had Jordan Howard and Matt Breida, who both were, well, Howard more or less a couple years ago was uh, that 1,000 yard guy in Chicago. Then he showed up, he was in Philadelphia, had a cup of tea with them, had a cup of coffee with them. Uh, was pretty good there. Um, I'm a big fan of him. I wanted us to sign him or trade for him multiple times, and we never did, and I was kind of mad about it. Uh, Matt Breida, also fantastic running back. He, uh, they just didn't have room for him in San Francisco, so you guys got him for a bargain. Um, so I definitely like your running backs better for us. Like now we have, so we have Singletary, who's our second year guy who is five, seven. So he's not like that guy who's going to be taking all the snaps all the time. He's not built as a, for a long term basically. And then Zach Moss, who is a rookie, who is more of that, uh, power back kind of guy. So, I mean, it's, it's more of a, let's hope this goes well kind of thing with the Bills running backs, opposed to the Dolphins where your biggest issue with it is just balancing who gets how many touches a game. Right. Um, I'm a big fan of Devin Singletary. I just was double checking. I thought he was a thousand yard rusher last year, but he had 775. Mm -hmm. um, he was splitting a lot with Frank Gorth early season. Yeah, yeah, I remember that now because I did have him on my fantasy. He had some big numbers and big weeks for me, mm -hmm. um, fantasy wise. And he, he was a rookie last year, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Um, as far as you guys are concerned, I'm a huge fan of Singletary. Like I said, I think he'll continue trending upwards. 
Um, Zach Moss was taken early, right, in the draft? Uh, like early third round. Third round, so, you know, it's kind of a wait and see with him, but I know he has some some potential. And then I'm a, I'm a big fan of TJ Yeldon. He came from Jacksonville, Yes, right? correct. Yeah. Um, and he's been in the league for a little while, so he's kind of like a veteran guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I definitely like the one-two punch you guys had last year with Singletary and Gore, just because I'm a huge Frank Gore fan. So I think the running back room for you guys took a little bit of a hit. Um, contrasted with Miami, we had I, Patrick Lard, I guess was our leader last year. I, I had no idea who the hell we had no running. We had no running backs. I I only know your running backs because I was bi- I'm big into the draft stuff. So I was big on Caleb, Caleb Lodge and Miles Gaskin, especially because I, I was a Washington Huskies fan too. So Miles Gaskin was their all time leading rusher. So when you guys okay. got him, I was like, oh, he's good. So he's good. He just didn't get a lot of opportunities. Kalen Balaji, on the other hand, I thought he was going to be good, but he had like 1.6 yards per carry last year on like over 100 carries. There's, there's that one other guy. I don't even remember his name, but he, I thought he was splitting carries with Lard, and then he got like a domestic violence charge oh, or something. Um, I don't even remember. Yeah, I forget his name, but um, Lard did some good things for us. I'm a huge fan of Balaj. Um He played in New England, I believe. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when he came over, he's a really good speedy guy, and he can truck some people as well. So I'm a big fan of Balazs. But I'm happy just that we have some no-name running backs this year. I mean, getting Jordan Howard, I was hype about that. And then getting Matt Breida from uh, San Francisco, like, I'm I'm in love with those two moves. Uh, Howard, um, my family's a Philadelphia fan, so I watch him all the time when he was on the Eagles. And I know from Chicago, he's a trucker, downhill runner, um, very reliable in third and short situations, red zone. Um, Matt was a phenomenal talent in San Francisco as well. Like you said, just didn't have room for him. So move him out of there. Um, I'm hope I have more faith in Jordan Howard. Uh, Matt, I feel like was more system based with Shanahan. I think he did really well with Shanahan's system. But uh, and then like you said, Balaj. It's just it's those three guys for me: Breda, uh, Breda uh, Howard, and Balaj. I think Howard will probably get most of the reps. Um, but I think it's a really good trio. Really excited to see what Beretta and Howard can do. So I would definitely give Dev um, an art advantage. Yeah, definitely. Um, one thing that I would like to mention as far as the Bills go is their current uh, fullback battle. Oh, yeah. Which is Patrick DeMarco versus Reggie Gillum, which um, may not seem like much to the outside, but like as far as the Bills go, this, I mean, at least to me, this is kind of like not necessarily a big deal, but... I'm definitely keeping a close eye on it because obviously Patrick DeMarco has like been on the team for a while. He's a guy that um, has contributed. I mean, maybe not in the passing game, but he's contributed. <laughs> but then there's this new guy in Reggie Gillum who could come in and make an impact in the passing game, make an impact in the running game. Um, potentially, I'm I'm rooting for him. Honestly, I am kind of looking forward to seeing how that takes place. Just to fill Aaron in on what you're talking about, uh, so I'm assuming, do you know who Patrick Marco is from Atlanta, and he went to Buffalo? He was a fullback for them, and then on, on the Super Bowl team, we brought him in. He was decent for us. He's been decent for us, run blocking, he's a captain, but his point about the passing game is we like to split him out wide for some reason, especially in playoff games when we're facing the Texans and we need a first down and we throw a deep ball to him in double coverage. All right. But we brought in this year. We brought in an undrafted free agent uh, named Roger Gilliam or Richard, Roger, Reggie, 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 Reggie Gilliam. Um, he's an undrafted free agent. I think out of Toledo or Tulsa or something like that. I think it's Tulsa. And he was a converted tight end. So in his, for his Toledo, point, Toledo. Okay. He uh, he's converted tight end. So he has that passing game thing. And he's a, so he still learned block position. But my biggest thing was that he uh, in his like two years starting, he had like four block kicks and one of them returned for a touchdown. So. That's in Buffalo. We get excited for fullback battles. Basically, is what we're trying to say here. <laughs> Actually, um, but yeah, I definitely would give the give the advantage to uh, running backs to Miami. So I don't think I don't. I think it's just much more. They're much more proven. We got a lot more. I think right now you can say like for the Bills, the same thing with tight ends. It's like you guys have more talent. We have the potential to have talent, but it depends on how development goes and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really think we have a lot of upside here, honestly. Alright, um next we'll go to offensive line. Uh we'll leave we'll sleep quarterbacks for last in the offense. Uh, offensive line, left tackle, Julian Davenport, Eric Flowers at left guard, Ted Carras at center, Michael Dietrich, uh, Dieter at right t- right guard, and Jesse Davis at right tackle with backups Jonathan Hubbard, Robert Hunt, Austin Jackson, uh 
Solomon Kindley, and I'm just like scanning through this to see anyone I would not recognize. But yeah, um, that's notable. And the, three of those guys, the Hunt, Hubbard, and Jackson are all rookies. So, um, and then for the Bills, we have, uh, go ahead, Tabor. For the Bills, we have at left tackle Deion Dawkins, who just got that big old contract. We have Quentin Spain, who didn't let up a single sack last year. So that's really oh. good. Um, we have Mitch Morris at center. We have Brian Winters, they have as the starter for right guard because John Feliciano got that, was it a neck injury? Torn pectoral. Torn pectoral. I don't know why I thought it was a neck injury, but yeah, um, he would have been the starter, but he got that injury. So Brian Winters, they now have as the starter. And then they have Cody Ford starting at right tackle with Ty Inseki as backup. We have um, Daryl Williams. We have, I mean, I am Not too much else necessarily. Yeah, I wouldn't say like we have a lot of depth. Well, we have we have depth because we have we have like I'm just from memory, I know we have like I think we have Evan Boehm who was a starter for the Cardinals. We have yeah. we had um, Daryl Williams who was just uh, oh I've been hearing from reading like posts about what's happening in training camp. They're moving forward to right guard, and they're gonna I'm thinking they're gonna put uh, Daryl Williams at right tackle where he was an All Pro two years ago. At so probably. Daryl Williams at right tackle, Ford at right guard, which is where people in the draft thought he was going to go last year, or his position should have been. So, changing that, I, again, I, I don't want to be like, I'm not I'm trying to be unbiased, but I honestly think, just from an offensive line standpoint, I think we have it because we have Deion Dawkins, who was probably a solid, like, top 20 tackle last year. I wouldn't say anything crazy, but top 20 tackle, Quentin Spain, let up zero sacks, didn't miss a game. Uh, center Mitch Morris, he was, he had a, I think he got hurt last year a little bit, um, but he was still decent enough for what he was. Um, uh, we paid him $11 million a year, so, uh, he, he better come in and do better than what, than mediocre. Uh, right guard, like I said, we have, it's between Brian Winters, who was probably the best offensive lineman on the Jets line last year, which isn't saying much, but, uh, and Cody Ford, who was... Is promising, not nothing proven yet. He was kind of iffy at right tackle, so they're trying to. I'm thinking they're kicking him with the right guard this year. And then Daryl Williams, who was garbage last year on the Carolina Panthers because they played him at left tackle, left guard, right guard, and right tackle, but mostly left tackle where he's totally out of his element. And I'm hoping we put him back at right tackle because, like I said, two or three seasons ago, he was a second team all pro at right tackle, then he tore his ACL, and then was bounced around the offensive line for whatever reason in Carolina. So I'm on that basis alone, I think we have the upper hand, but I do like who the Dolphins brought in um, with Jonathan Hubbard, Robert Hunt as your backups there in the guards. Uh, I know Michael Dieter is good. I wasn't a big fan of the Eric Flower signing. Um, also, Julian Davenport is, from his time with the Texans at least, I didn't like him that much, but we can always you know change the scenery and stuff. And I know you guys drafted Austin Jackson with the 20th overall pick, or 21st yeah. overall pick, 22nd, something like that. But I do have to counter that with, if you ever watched... The Iowa versus USC game, AJ Epinesa had two sacks on him and completely bullied his ass. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I do. I do know that, what you're talking about. Um, like, I'm I'm not too familiar base with the offense, off, all offensive line positions. I just know Miami historically has a disgraceful offensive line. <laughs> so they can never stay healthy. They always allow guys to just come through whenever they want and get sacks. So... Um, I think we're making right moves with the signing or the draft of Austin Jackson and Haunt. Um, I like the Eric Flowers uh, uh, signing. I don't, I don't know what I, what I, I like him. I like. Okay, well, he was terrible on the Giants at left tackle. Yeah. When he moved to guard, he was better. But didn't That's you guys right. pay him like ten million dollars a year? Yeah, we gave him a little. Yeah, we gave him a healthy paycheck. Yeah, a little, little bit more than he probably deserves. But uh, that, that's that's my biggest hangup. Is that okay? I'm fine with Eric Flowers at left guard. But not for ten million dollars a year. <laughs> what, maybe like four million? I, I mean, like if you give him like six, seven, maybe. Like we paid, like we said, Quentin Spain. He played was our left guard starter for the whole year, zero sacks, and we just resigned him for like, I think it was like three years at five million dollars a year. Oh, okay. So we didn't really, we didn't like overpay that much. So I don't know. I just like when I saw that, and then I saw Eric Flowers, who was bad on the Giants, was okay in guard, and then signed with you guys. I was like. They're upgrading their line, but I mean, it was it was a little, it was a teensy bit overpayment, in my well, opinion. Miami has a history of overpaying and not getting the production out of the guys that are supposed to produce. But yeah, I mean, 
like I said, I'm not a big guru on the offensive line on either side. I just know Miami has historically had has has had issues getting the right five guys lined up. Mm-hmm. Um, and based on what you're telling me about the Bills, the guy who started all 16 allowed zero sacks. Um, sounds like you guys definitely have more depth, uh, better talent, and more experience. So I'll I'll give that to you guys. Sweet. All right. Uh, any 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 opinions, Tabor? Um. Let me go back. I was looking at some at a player's profile because I didn't recognize his name. But um, for all I know, yeah, I think that um, I'm I'm honestly just hoping that some of our backups, because I feel like an injury or something eventually is going to happen where our line might get shaken up. I'm just hoping that some of our backups that might kind of be wishy-washy kind of step up. I know that Ty Inseki is kind of proven to be a solid backup that can play mm-hmm. anywhere okay. he wants, really. Um, and of course, we have Daryl Williams that could potentially start and regain that all pro skill that he once had. Um, but I mean, I think it's just a matter of we'll see as far as our line. I feel like our starting line is still just going to be good like it was last year. I think that's like no question. I mean, mostly all the same guys. Everyone's going to come in, pick up where they left off and just build that rapport. I think everyone's going to be good. They're going to do a good job of protecting Josh Allen. But I feel like it's just backups are kind of a bit of a question mark for me. I'm just happy we have a secure left tackle. Um, I know that. Dolphins used to have one. I can't remember what his name was. I think it, I think it rhymed with like a, like a, a tinsel or like a uh, maybe tinsel, the mm-hmm. chain smoking guy. Yeah, yeah. I was I was making a little bit of a joke there. Way. The gas mask man. The ga- yeah, the gas mask. Man. Uh, but to conclude on the offensive line, like it's not just about the guys in front. I mean, obviously uh, it's huge, but it, it also is connected with the quarterback. Obviously, Fitz. Um, did some good things and scrambled for a lot of yards actually for his age and um wasn't he your guy's leading rusher <laughs> he, yes he was our leading rusher uh, i should have just put him in the in the running back position as well but so yeah fits can scramble obviously Tua when he gets a shot has that mobility but um i think josh allen is more versatile um with scrambling pocket presence and all that so along with a solidified offensive line i think you guys have a smarter uh quarterback right now so yeah we uh Speaking of quarterbacks, you guys have Fitz, but you also drafted Tua fifth overall and still have Josh Rosen on the roster. Um, so you have a deep quarterback room, I'll say, uh, because I know Fitz and Tua are going to be battling out for the starting position. I'm cur- curious to see what what you think as your uh, – for your uh, – who should start right off or who should start when. And then Rosen is Rosen. We don't know what the hell is going on there. Uh, it was worth a shot last year, but, I mean, I don't know what happened to him. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a lot to break down. I mean, starting with Rosen, I'll say that, I mean, I feel bad for the guy. Drafted very high. He's been shifted all around in his career. Even when he got opportunities last season with Miami, it's just, we we were in a rebuilding, tanking phase. So it's not like he even really had a fair shot. He is coming in, obviously, as QB3 this year. But um, as far as what I'm reading, what's going on at training camp so far, he's actually playing better than Tua and Fitz right now so if you were going to go by the logic of who's playing better rosen should be starting um as of right now but obviously it's obvious uh, between fitz and and tua uh to answer your question about who's starting um our head coach has pretty much made it clear that fitz will probably start um i've been back and forth on it personally um but i concluded in myself that based on this season being unorthodox with the virus and just a little bit of the game is kind of sucked out of it for me um i do expect miami to be better but i do expect like a huge leap in 2021 Mm -hmm. so i have no problem with tua sitting healing a little bit more fitz did phenomenal last year honestly i'm I'm very i have no problem with him keeping the starting job all the way through the season or even halfway i think it'll be smart uh, depending on what our record is depending on if we have playoff implications or just playing for fun at the end of the season um, I would give Tua a few starts, especially if things aren't going so well with Fitz, but uh, Fitz is more than capable of playing all 16 games and handing over the reins to Tua in 2021. Yeah, and then for the Bills, we have Josh Allen, Matt Barkley, Jake from Davis Webb, who's – Davis Webb is like – I think he's like 25, but he's basically a coach at this point. Like, they went down to yeah. Florida. They went down to yeah. Florida for like a camp, like a, a camp they made themselves, and they uh, – 
he was the coach there, and he's like the youngest guy at Ottawa, of them, besides from. But yeah, I uh, yeah. again b- uh, trying to be unbiased. I do think our quarterback position, like if just going with starters, I think we have the advantage as of right now. Like Fitz did great last year for what he had. Like he had from what for what he had around him and what was going on with the team at the time. I think he did great. And I was at the game when we faced you guys home here, uh, and he definitely gave me a scare uh, towards the end of the game. So he's definitely. And from the time when I started watching, when I started becoming a fan, he was the quarterback here. So I definitely know him well from those years too. So I, I definitely respect his game, but I just think uh, I believe I well I believe Josh will be able to have this. He made a step last year. I'm hoping he can make another step this year. Um, but he's definitely and especially with the weapons we got, I'm just hoping that he can keep his game up from last year because like I know like for like first four weeks he had like seven or he had like six or seven interceptions from weeks five to 17 he had two so I mean yeah. if he can keep that going while also adding more yards a little bit to feed Stefan Diggs I think he'll be able to develop more maybe take less scary hits against the Patriots um but uh yeah outside of, outside of that um it's really just a battle for backup QB spot nothing really too important there but uh I just read a report today, like an hour ago, that Allen is actually absent from practice today, so I have no idea why. And we're one of the teams that got affected by the doubt, the thing where there's like a miss, there was like a miss testing this morning, where like some sure. tests came back false positive, and we're one of the teams that got messed up with that. So I'm a little bit afraid about that, but yeah, obviously Fitz is in our long term. It's probably his last year with us, and like like you said, he did some great things. Uh, Tua. He initially, I think he started like seven for seven throwing in training camp, and then he had a two interception day yesterday or two days ago, whatever it was, where he went like eight of 13 or something like that. And Floor, our head coach said, you know, uh, pretty much overall, he's a rookie. You know, he's making some good decisions, some bad decisions. I'm a big fan of Josh Allen. I think he did a, a lot of great things last season. He's a he, he's a running quarterback. His pocket presence is pretty well. He's got a great arm. Um, he just is a good game manager. He knows the game very well. I think he took a, a great step, but just like with everyone else, it's going to be that consistency of progression. Can he do it in year three? But I think he gave you guys a lot of hope and a lot of Buffalo fans a lot of hope. He played really, really well in that wild card game last season too. So I'll definitely give the quarterback edge to you guys for sure. All right. Yeah, so uh, just doing overall score, I think uh, we gave you guys uh, running back, tight end, and – We'll we'll say we'll say we'll we pushed wide receiver we'll split we'll split wide receiver, and then okay. we got quarterback offensive line. So that's how the offense basically broke down with our little debate here. We we can we can have our own separate feelings, but as of what we discussed, that seems to be a uh, seems to be how it's going. Um, and then we'll do this is going to go by a little bit faster. We'll do the defense. Um, former Bill Shackle Austin is your starting DN. Devin Godchow at nose tackle. Uh, Christian Wilkins. With Emmanuel Ogba, Raquan Davis, Jason Strobridge, uh, Brandon Bryant, Benito Jones, Tyson Render, Nito Quiros, and Zach Sealer. Yeah. So you guys have a lot of pieces that. Uh, you know, read 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 the Bills ones first, and then we'll talk about it. All right. So um, as far as ends go, we have Mario Addison, Jerry Hughes, Trent Murphy, AJ Epinesa. Daryl uh, Johnson, um, Brian Cox Jr., and then for tackles, we got Ed Oliver, Vernon Butler, Quentin Jefferson, Harrison Phillips, and Vincent Taylor with two other guys, but... Not Nick and the team, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Justin Zimmer and Tenzel Smart. <laughs> so, yeah, not making this. Yeah. Um, just as from someone who watched Shaq Lawson every game his entire career, uh, well, outside of... Well, we're, we're not going to count the Rex years. The Rex years was... We're not going to talk about that. Uh, but when he played, when he played the last two seasons, he was good. Um, he's definitely more of the. Uh, if you guys, if you guys are running the three four, are you guys running a three four or four three defense? Do you know? Um, I don't think we have anything said. I think we, I think it's heading towards three four, mm-hmm. but I think we're still, you know, working on it. Yeah, because when Shaq, when we we run four three predominantly, and Shaq was more of that strong side, like run stopper, D end. He got six sacks or six and a half sacks last season, which led our team, which is kind of sad. Or no, no, he didn't lead the team. The Jordan Phillips led our team, but he, yeah. uh, shut up. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> he was, he still led our DNs in sacks. Uh, looking at you, Tabor. Uh, but he was, hey. he, he had, he had some, uh, he had some good moments, especially in, like the Cowboys game. He's, 
it's more of a, a high floor, low ceiling kind of guy. Like we drafted in the first round, it was kind of an iffy pick. But he's definitely someone that will benefit from being in that kind of system again. Because when he was when we were in 3-4 under Rex Ryan, he was an outside linebacker, which was terrible. Uh, if he if he plays the DM position, like the like a five technique, uh, or like a head up on an offensive tackle uh, in the 3-4, I think he'll have a lot more success than uh, probably didn't even had here in the 4-3, just because I know that's the kind of player he play he is. Um, Davin Godchow, I, I remember following him out of Missouri. He's pretty decent. Um, from what I remember, uh, Christian Wilkins is Christian Wilkins. You guys he tried to murder the commissioner when he got drafted. Always points there. I'm a big fan of him. Uh, yeah, I like him. He, uh, he's pretty good. He's definitely probably the leader of that, that group. And then I also like the rookies you brought in with Raekwon Davis and Jason Strobridge. And Emmanuel Ogba is always a good addition to have. So your D-line, I'm definitely a fan of. I'm going to lean towards ours a little bit because we have Jerry Hughes, who even though he didn't have that great of a season last year, and he's on the wrong side of 30. He's shown he can be a double-digit sack getter. Uh, Mario Addison has had nine sacks every season for the past, like, four or five seasons. Uh, Epines is coming in. He's going to be very versatile playing D and D tackle. Um, and I'm pretty sure we're going to cut Murphy, so I'm not going to really worry about him. But uh, at D tackle, we have Ed Oliver, obviously, who um, he was our, for, he was our ninth overall pick. He's, he's had, recently in camp, he's been injured a little bit, but... Uh, He's cleared from his old driving drunk thing. He's not going to get suspended or anything because he was he uh, got cleared from that. But uh, I'm hoping he can take the next step in that even if we put like Epinesa in a D tackle, we also still have depth with like Harrison Phillips, who was like a who was like uh, I think he had like a hundred tackles in college at nose tackle one year. He, he tore his ACL last year, so he was out a lot. Um, definitely one of my favorite players on the team. Uh, and we have just we just have some decent depth of while we had starters from like. Uh, Jefferson, Quentin Jefferson was a starter on the Seahawks. If you remember, them and Jackson got in a fight and someone threw popcorn at him. That was yeah. him. That was him. Uh, so, yeah, we have – and Vernon Butler is another guy from Carolina who started for them last year. So, we have a lot of starters along the defensive line and, like, some proven guys that have been in the league for years, um, as well as some sprinkling of, like, some some higher-end talent with, uh, with Oliver. So, I mean, I have high expectations for them. And I know we have, like, a – there's, like, a floor – I think, and I just, I just, I just like our group overall more. But I also don't. I, I, it could be a cause because I'd also like the guys you brought in with uh, Lawson and you have Wilkins. So I mean, those guys can also, if they have, if they turn it up this year, they could be better. It's, it's really a, a, a toss up for me. But I would lean with us as of right now. Yeah, I agree with you. I think you guys overall have a the better defense, more proven defense. I think Buffalo has a reputation for just always having a pretty solid defense. Uh, Miami, there's been times over the past few years where I felt like we were going to be a top 10 defense, especially when we had Cam Wake and Adonik and Sue mm -hmm. the interior, but it's just like we bring in these big guys, we have some big names on defense, and it just seems like we always get gashed. I, I don't understand it. Uh, I would draw it up to coaching, but as far as our defense is concerned, I was a huge fan of the Shaq Lawson signing. Um, bringing in Kyle Van Noy from New England was huge. And then Byron Jones, I think it was just obviously our big free agent landing on the defensive side of the ball. Him matched up with Xavier Howard, arguably is maybe the best corner duo in the NFL right now. Um, our biggest loss was Rashad Jones, obviously. Um, probably one of or top three, probably best safeties in the NFL. So with, um, you know, Byron Jones, Kyle Van Noy, Shaq Lawson, uh, we definitely added some pieces, upgraded some pieces. Um, I think our defense played better towards the end of the season last year. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be getting those guys to gel well, play well. Um, X and Byron um, on the corners, I think will be pretty locked down. So I think our focus is going to be on the interior side, stopping the run, the intermediate routes, the short passes. I think that's where our focus should be and our, where our struggles will probably get us because historically we have a hard time stopping the run. Um, so overall, I really like the additions we put on defense. I think we have the ability to be a top 10, 15 defense if we really live up to our potential. But overall, I would give it to Buffalo, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, definitely with your linebackers too, with the starters I have here, we have Kyle Van Noy, you guys brought in, Jerome Baker, Quan Gillen, and Andrew Van Ginkle. I like... I like your guys' linebackers a lot just because of who I, who I followed and watched you guys last year. I like them, especially with Kyle Van Noy, and it's 
uh, I just I'm worried about Vandoy. Like he's a good player, but I'm worried because like you know all those guys from New England. The whole running joke is that they do really well there, and then as soon as they get a big contract somewhere else, they fall off. I'm hoping that's not the case for your sake and for Vandoy because I like him as a player. Um, I, I love your as linebackers. I just kind of it's kind of weird. I probably would give you guys the edge in linebacker for now just because we we have two solid players. We have uh, Matt Milano and Tremaine Edmonds. Tremaine Edmonds is still kind of raw. Uh, Milano is more probably the probably overall the better linebacker right now, but he's the player is more important position. He's smaller. Um, but and then our strong side linebacker, it's kind of up in the air who's playing it right now. We have we brought in Tyler Madkevich. We brought in uh, AJ Klein. So it's like it's not really. I'm not too confident in that position. So. I would give you guys maybe the slight edge of linebacker just because you guys have guys who I know are going to be good, who have been playing their positions, and like Van Noy, who was... I wanted us to sign him because to play that strong side linebacker position, but yeah. he ended up going to you guys just with the, the Patriots connection there with your coach and just the scheme fit and all that stuff. So I right. give you guys the slight edge of linebacker, um, even though I think our two guys... I think the two guys we have, maybe not... Maybe like Milano and Van Noy, I'd say it'd be like tied, but I think, I think I, I'm liking... Uh, Edmonds as like the best linebacker out of all of them put together just because of how just the, the size the athletic freak he's like 6'5 runs like a 4'4 four, 4'5 four, four, he's just insane but uh yeah just because we don't have that solid because El- Lorenzo Alexander retired I don't think we're as solid at the linebacker position as we would have been mm-hmm. um and like you said I believe corners wise I'll give you guys the corners because you have Xavier Howard and Byron Jones we have just Trey White and then Josh Norman got hurt and he's also was a cooked sausage on Washington. Uh, Levi Wallace is good, not great. He got torched by Devontae Parker when we play, played you guys at home. So I'm, yeah. it's it, we our, our number two leaves some to be desired. But I definitely like Trey White. Obviously, he's up there in the competition for best, best corner in the league. And our safety duo, I feel, is just criminally underrated. I know Mike High made a Pro Bowl like two years ago. Jordan Player has had like a hundred tackles and at least like three interceptions the past two seasons. Hyde has had five. Like, five Hyde has had like four or five interceptions the past two seasons. We just, it's where I think we just. You guys have the corners, like number one, number two corner. And like I said, we have Norman and Wall and Wallace, and we also have our slot corner, uh, Teron Johnson. So we have, we're, I'd say we we have deep corners, but not. No, not high end one and twos like you guys have so it's another I, I don't know I feel like I don't want to say like I want to go with us just because we have Trey White but at the same time we don't have that second corner and I want to go with us because we have safeties we might have the, the safety edge on you if slightly if anything slightly because I know I like, I like Eric Rowe Bobby McCain isn't that isn't that terrible he's pretty good lost uh, Mick is, uh, Fitzpatrick Mick- yeah, I can't say his first name. Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick, you lost him, and then you also lost Rashad Jones. So I think yeah. I'll give us the edge at safety as well. So I think overall, even though you know, number one, number two corners are very important, I think it's overall DBs, I'd give us the edge. Uh, so I'll give you guys linebacker. I'll take D-line and safeties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think linebacker-wise and corner-wise, we might have a slight edge. But if I'm looking at it as a complete nucleus, that uh, Buffalo would probably has better depth and more talent at uh, aside from the linebacker and corner positions. And you guys are just better coached um, than Miami historically, so I, I don't buy into our defensive scheme yet until we actually produce. Right, yeah. I mean, I think we were uh, – I don't know if you could fact-check this, table, but I know we were like – I think we were the third-ranked defense in the yards allowed last year or something like that. Yeah, yep, third. So, I mean, I have high expectations. Uh, I know we lost our starting linebacker, but I know uh, bringing in guys on D-line – because we, we str- the thing we struggled with last year was – we always have like three game periods. It usually happens when Miami comes to town, where we let up like 200 rushing yards a game. Uh, so we, we struggle with stopping the run sometimes, which is basically, basically come down to fits, and then also uh, with uh, sacks. So I'm hoping we can upgrade our sacks, our sack production, and then also you know keep doing what we were doing last year. Right. Um, but yeah, I uh, any any I know you're looking up for me, Taylor. But uh, any comments, anything about the defense comparisons? Um. Well, first, this website says we were fourth. I don't know if we were really fourth. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I thought I was third. But um. But, um. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with everything that was said. Like, I think that we have the edge on safety. Um, especially we have guys that are backups like Dean Merlo and Siren Neal that can step up, and I think can have an impact on a defense, on our defense at least, as well as they're really good at um special teams. 
I think that in corner, I like Trey White and I like Taron Johnson. Josh Norman, of course, got injured, like you said. Um, Levi, I'm still high on, but I know some people are kind of like iffy on him. He's not like great, but he's not terrible either. Um, we still have Cam Lewis as a backup. We drafted Dane Jackson and we signed uh, this guy named Isaiah Brown, who I don't think is going to make it, but Dane Jackson might be able to s- squeeze onto the final roster. Um, I'm kind of waiting to see how that works out. I hope he works out because I like him personally, but um, I definitely agree that the Dolphins have the upper hand on cornerback. Um, for linebackers, I'm hoping that Voshan Joseph, of course, because I'm still high on him, ends up starting over... Well, I don't think he'll start over AJ Klein, because right now it says that AJ Klein is the starter, on, along with Tremaine Edmonds and Matt Milano. But I hope that Voshan Joseph can step it up and make an impact, because I really like him. I'm still very high on him. Yeah, I was high on him coming out of college, but I think... I, I, I don't trust that a fourth rounder who was injured last year could come in and kill it for us but i mean matt milano was fifth rounder so it's not crazy right and i just like how he's like a big i like having like big hitters and i know that he's a real heavy hitter coming out of college so i just liked that about him um and yeah that's pretty much all i got as far as defense we already covered d-line um we already know who Tremaine edmonds matt milano are those guys are gonna do them (laughs) so now the last thing I want to do right before we finish up with this episode is uh, going through, we went through all four teams now. What is your division standings looking like? Um, it's, it's tough because you really want to go against the Patriots with them losing mm-hmm. a lot of um, you know structure, which made them them Brady and Gronk and, and, and company. Um, like I said, it's just a weird season in general with the whole virus thing. If you, players get the virus, they're out for you know. It's, just, it's there's so much that goes into it. But if I'm looking at roster wise and schedule wise as my primary um, arguments for it, I do think that the Bills will win the division at ten wins. I think the uh, I'll give it. I'll say the Patriots are are close. I, I think um, they're capable of. Uh, fighting it out with the Bills for the division. So I'll say Patriots get nine, nine and seven. Miami, um, I think we have a lot of talent. I really think we made a lot of good additions in the off season. It's just going to be about execution. I'm not expecting anything huge this year, but like I said, 2021, I really think we'll make a playoff run. I think I'm going to put us at seven wins, but if we if a few games go our way, it could easily be nine. But I'll put us at seven. And then the Jets, I just don't believe in Adam Gase too much. And I think they have the most work to do roster-wise. So I'm going to put them at five. So it'll be Bills, Patriots, Dolphins, and Jets. Yeah, um, go ahead, Taylor. Um, I'll say that I agree with that. I think that um, the Dolphins could end up being second over the Patriots. I think that it it I am it really is just we have to wait and see how the season goes. It's, there's a lot with this division that's up in the air. Um I feel like you could potentially make a case for any team, well maybe not the Jets, but you can make a case for any team getting or winning the division, I feel. I mean if things don't go the Bills way and then the Patriots are just, Bill Belichick just does his thing, I could see them winning the division. I think if the Dolphins, everything goes their way, they could potentially win the division. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's, I guess it's kind of a long shot, but again, it's possible. So I think it's a lot in the air. We just have to wait and see how the season goes first. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I'd say it's going to be close. So I'd say like, I, I agree with you guys, the Bills probably win, but I'd say the Bills win it with like nine, if maybe 10 wins just because of how cha- cha- uh, chaotic it's going to be and how unpredictable it is with the COVID stuff. Um, I think the Patriots and Dolphins have like a similar win range. Where like the Patriots, I think are like are gonna go like eight and eight, and the Dolphins could go anywhere from like seven and nine to eight, nine and seven. So it could really be a close in the middle of the division where like the Patriots and Dolphins could be either two or three. And then I, I'm just really low on the Jets. I don't think the Jets are gonna be good at all. I don't have any faith in that coaching staff. I don't have faith in 
I, I, I like the players they brought in, but I don't have faith they're going to be able to mesh well or play. And it's all, it all comes down to the trenches. And if you only build one side of it and you don't have the offensive line and you're just, it's, I just don't, I have no faith in the Jets. I, they're definitely my, uh, taking away the fact the Patriots won all the time. I think the Jets are my least favorite team in the division. I just hate them. <laughs> Watch them win a the division now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's going to be great. I was just be, about to what's that? I was just about to say, just because I like Sam Donald so much, I watched them win the division. I'm not. I want to be surprised. I um, it's the seven playoff team bracket this year, right? Correct. Seven? Correct. So, I mean, a team that was eight, that goes eight and eight. Like last year, there were three teams that were nine and seven, and they would have all made it. So, if yeah. you go nine and seven or even eight and eight this year, you could make the playoffs. Because the AFC is much weaker than the NFC oh, when yeah. it comes. To- you can maybe a seven and nine team will even grab the seven C. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, a seven nine team could win this division technically. <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think that's everything we got for today. Um, we went a little long, so I might have. To, we're probably gonna. The plan is probably gonna be to split these up into two like separate. Like we'll do like the Jets Patriots section and then just this section as its own episode. We'll post them on the same day though. So. Um. But yeah. Uh. I I'm all tapped out of things to say about uh, our little section here. Uh. We are gonna do uh, an episode for the Dolphins Insider podcast. Over, are you just are you only on Spotify? Yeah. All right. So over on Spotify, if you want to go check it out, um, we're gonna be on the uh, Dolphins Insider podcast uh, going up sometime uh, soon. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look forward to putting this up. And um, thank you for joining us, Aaron. Uh, like I said, we're gonna have all your information in the bottom. Uh, go check him out. He's really cool. Uh, he gets, he definitely knows his stuff about the Dolphins and other football in general. So I mean, uh, I'm glad you came on. Yeah, man. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the time.